we go. Again. Hey folks, this is uh, Adam Gusso from Modern Blues Harmonica. This video is going to be uh, the kind of video that I have uploaded occasionally in the course of my more than a decade at YouTube, which is to say it's going to be kind of a dual-use video. So it's going to have a time-sensitive element, uh, and it's going to have uh, something that will not be time-sensitive and that will, will hang out here in, in cyberspace for a while. The time-sensitive element is that I want to talk to you about a Global Blues Harmonica Summit. The second one that I've done, I think it's the third or fourth that Ronnie Shellis has done, um, I did one with him, uh, gosh, more than a year ago with him and David Barrett this time, and uh, Tomlin Leckie. And this time around, it's going to be Ronnie Shellis, Adam Gusso, and Lee Sankey from uh, over in the UK. Lee's a terrific teacher. Anyway, I'm going to put on my glasses and tell you what this thing is about. So please stick, stick around and let me tell you when it is, how much it costs, told you who is, but I'm going to read you what I'm going to be talking about, then I'm going to take off the glasses and we're going to have a little lesson, okay? So stick with me just for a little bit. It's on Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. Again, that's the time-sensitive element. Saturday, November 3rd. Um, it's the Fall Global Blues Harmonica Summit, featuring yours truly, Lee Sankey and Ronnie. The, the format, or the, what's the, the, the rubric, the title of the, the seminar, uh, is beyond the 12 bar form, improving and extending your improvisations on one or two chords. Now this is a, when we say Global Blues Harmonica Summit, what we mean is that this is an interactive online webinar. What's a webinar? Well, it means if you have a high speed internet connection, you can watch us, uh, watch what we're doing and basically listen to our lectures. And then we're gonna have Q and A, we'll have that moderated so you can sort of ask questions instantly about stuff that we've told you. It, to have three people talking about this one topic from three different perspectives, and again, I'm going to give you my perspective in a minute, we find it's an extremely, it's a useful way of very quickly kind of aggregating and figuring out what the important sort of central elements are. You'll get three very different teachers. We have different teaching styles, different insights. Each of us has been playing for a long time, performing for a long time. So, um, $60. It runs from, and this is actually important, let me get, get you the hours. So it runs on that Saturday, November 3rd, in Pacific time, 9 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. So that's three, four hours and 45 minutes. So basically what you've got is you've got each of us talking for an hour. And it is Ronnie first, and me second, and Lee third. Each of us talks for, well, we'll talk for 50 minutes and then have a quick little Q&A. And then I think the three of us, let me make sure I'm right about that, Q&A with all of the instructors for the final 45 minutes. So, neat and sweet. The first time around, I think we did one of these, it was eight hours long. It was a little bit too long, probably. So we've toned it down a little, but still, five, four, and a half, four hours and 45 minutes is just about the right thing. 60 bucks, can't beat it. And you don't have to fly, you don't have to go to the airport, you don't have to pay for a hotel room if you came to one of our things. You don't have to drive, you can just sit in the, your room and get it. And if you feel like getting up and walking around, you can do that. You can have a cup of coffee while we're talking to you. So um, here's what I'm talking about. So my, this is how I described it. Im improvising over the four chord, a three octave approach to chord tones and color tones. I wrote the four or subdominant chord fills only 25% of the space in a 12 bar blues. Bars five, six, and 10. So if you have a 12 bar blues thing in your head, the first four bars are the one chord. Then you go in bars five and six, the four chord, back to one chord. And then bar nine is the five chord, bar 10 is the four chord. So this is, we're talking here strictly about 12 bar blues. But I want to show you, so I'll, I'll read this. Yet knowing how to imply or make that particular chord change so that a listener really hears it is an absolutely crucial aspect of blues harmonica improvisation. Most beginners, and I'll tell you, most intermediates, struggle to find melodies that skillfully evoke the four chord. Most intermediate players have a favorite lick or two, okay, this is what I wrote, but quickly exhaust their repertoire. In this session, we'll move up the harp from bottom to top, because that's one of my key ideas, is you, you, you think differently when you find these 
licks in different places on the harp. Identifying chord tones and color tones. And I'll give you a top five list of go-to moves. Did I say I was going to do that? To make your four chord playing come alive, mastering this particular element of the harmonica, who wrote this prose, requires a more subtle approach to blues tonality than you may be familiar with. Get ready to listen closely and take notes, okay? Now, were you t paying attention? What day is this event going to be? Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick little hit lesson. This is something that I really should be doing a lot more of. I'll do it maybe after I share my the full spectrum of my ideas at the session, but let's just start with a basic lick, four chord. So I'll tell you, my number one of the five go-to moves, number one, how to imply the four chord, what would you think that would be? Now you might say, interestingly enough, you might say the, the root note of the four chord. But that's actually not, that, that's, that's good. That's, I think that has to be one of the top five moves. It's not actually the one that I think of first. That in itself, the fact that a guy has been playing for 44 years would tell you that, that's actually, that's something you might want to, okay. Why? Why would you say that? So what is the go-to move? It's the blue third. It's the three-hole draw bent down between a quarter and a half step. Why do I say that? Well, it's interesting. Because the blue third, when you play it, so the blue third is basically a minor third of a sort. Okay, that's the major third, minor third, that spoonful, that's the blue third or minor third. If you've been following me for years, you know that already, but what you don't, what you may not know is what happens when we play that note over the four chord. Why is it so important that it actually implies the four chord? What note is it over the four chord? Well, over the one chord, it's just a flatted third, so root third fifth. the flat seventh on the one chord. Just a teeny weeny bit of your love. Root third fifth seventh. Root third fifth flat seventh. All right, if I want to imply the four chord, I'm going to use that blue third, but it's not the blue third. This for me, at the right moment in my harmonica and harmonic sense development, was a mind-blowing idea. It's not the blue third when you play it over the four chord. You can think of it as the blue third. It's something else. Well, what is it? It's the flat seventh. So the blue third, that three draw flattened a little bit, blue third of your one chord becomes a flat seventh. It's the flat seventh of your four chord. And it turns out that it's a great way of signifying the change. Let me show you exactly what I mean. And so I'm going to fudge it a little bit because I'm going to, I'm going to do a lick. What did I do there? This is, by the way, a C harp. One draw, two blow, two draw. And I went to the three draw. I went to the major third of the one chord. If I play the same lick, but start on the one below, which would be the root of the four chord, and then play the two blow and the two draw, the same two, the second and third note, same note as the first lick. Except I'm going to play the three blow instead of the two draw. But that's a, that's a, a, a subtlety. And I'm going to play the three draw, but this time on the four chord, I'm going to flat it slightly. So I'm going to go. That was the first four bars of a 12-bar blues. I did what we call the quick four. So actually, when I say there's only three bars in which the four chord appears, you can also use it in bar two. It's called the quick four. So that change right there, I'm going to show you another lick that makes it clear. Here we go. Again. So 
I would simplify it. So for you, let's just simplify it. Now, if you're not a very good player, if, 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 if getting that blue third is hard, and it is hard, then you're going to have a tough time making the change that way. This may be one reason why a lot of players, beginning certainly, and even intermediate players who haven't yet mastered the blue third, don't understand how to redeploy it to quickly signify the change, the four chord change. Now here's a place, here's a, here's a great place where it's done in bars five and six. Um, well, okay, let me try this. The, um, a big Walter Horton, the solo on Have a Good Time. Now what I did there, believe it or not, was do a, the first three draw that I did wasn't quite unbent. It was actually slightly bent. When I did it over the four chord, I slightly bent it a little bit more. Now that's a really subtle thing. Amazing that, that Big Walter Horton does that. So here was, here's what it would sound like one after the other. That, I probably bent it a little too far the first time. That time I sort of let it up a little bit. See, what I'm saying is I'm playing with the precise intonation of the three draw. And I can't tell you how important this is. And it's really important. If you want to move up and become an advanced player, if you're an intermediate player, this is one of the best ways of telling the advanced players that you know what you're doing. So you talk about kind of cultural capital, uh, little minute discriminations between players, the little pecking order thing. That's sort of what we're talking about. Um, Okay, so here's a way to practice it. I'm just going to have you, and, and we'll be listening. Here's a much simplif more simplified way of practicing this thing, and it'll teach your ear to listen. So listen to this. I'm just moving back and forth between two draw, three draw with no bend, four blow, and three draw. One, two, three, four. And now I'm going to go with the blue third, and it's going to because we're going to be on bars five and six, and it's going to really quickly imply that change. So I went back. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know how, but you need to begin to listen to it. And of course, I need to get it exactly right, or you won't hear it. So let me alternate. Um, if you were literally, if there was a change where you're going one chord to four chord on alternate bars, then this would be the way to do that. But this is also a way to add, it's a way to add melodic interest. So I'm going to alternate between and can you, now that, that, that's very audible. Well that, and, and to the degree that it's audible, to the degree that your ear was struck by the different sound of that second riff, you're getting it. That's the blue third, which when played over a four chord is suddenly the flat seventh and a really bluesy note. Okay, does that make sense? And, and, and here, you know, there are, the reason why it sounds like the four chord is because when guitar players are playing, I really should get my guitar, when guitar players are playing blues and, and they move to the four chord, they're going to do that, they're, they're going to do that, that flat seven, that four dominant seven chord. It's going to have that flat third in it. So that's, you know, it's going to have it in it. Um, but it's going to be the flat seventh. It, it's, it's harmonic function is flat seven when you're on the four chord. But the blues doesn't think that way. The blues knows that there's some weird kind of instability melodically between major third and minor third and expresses itself harmonically. 
I don't know if that makes sense, but it expresses itself harmonically. When the chord changes to the from the one chord to the four chord, or from the five chord down to the four chord, flatten the third a little bit, and we'll get the change. Listen to this. So alternate them. And of course, when I play that blue third, or that flat seventh, when I play that blue third, it takes a lot of strength. So one of the key things here is simply developing the chops that lets you do it in a way that, that sounds right. Here we go. I like the sound of this thing. All right, that's all for me, Global Blues Harmonica Summit. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.